السلام عليكم آه هذه المحاضرة آه في سلسلة آه محاضرات آه مساق العيون لطلاب السنة الخامسة في كلية الطب في الجامعة الهاشمية رح نحكي اليوم عن موضوع قصير وسريع إن شاء الله هو Retinal Vascular Occlusions وبالتحديد رح نحكي عن Retinal Vein Occlusion بالبداية نحكي إيش الأشياء اللي ممكن يخلي المريض at risk إنه يصير في عنده retinal vein occlusion في عنا systemic and ocular risk factors من systemic risk factors أهمها على الإطلاق هو the age the incidence of venous occlusion whether it is central or branch increase with increasing age more in patients at the their seventh and sixth decade Uh, concurrent vascular uh, illnesses also uh, predispose patients to uh, venous occlusions uh, such as hypertension and diabetes. Hypertension specifically is a major risk factor for branch retinal vein occlusion. Uh, atherosclerosis is uh, a very important systemic uh, risk factor uh, and uh, it is considered uh, one of the things that uh, affect patients Uh, at, at uh, uh, advanced age or patients with risk factors for atherosclerosis. Why atherosclerosis will cause venous occlusion? We know that, uh, that the central lateral artery and the central retinal vein, they uh, travel uh, uh, within the optic nerve in the same adventitial sheath. So when the artery become uh, uh, sclerotic, that will compress on the vein and that will increase the risk of venous occlusion. Um, among the ocular risk factors, uh, we know the glaucoma, uh, hypermetropia, and the hypermetropic eye is a small eye, so everything is crowded, and we expect that also the, the vein uh, will be encroached uh, upon by the adjacent structures and that will predispose, will predispose the vein for uh, uh, clotting, uh, formation of a clots, and the eventually uh, closure. Uh, specific disorders that uh, cause uh, periphlebitis, such as sarcoidosis and uh, Behcet's disease. Uh, and uh, rarely additional, uh, rarely the congenital anomalies of the central retinal vein. Also, we should not ignore among the systemic uh, risk factors, the blood dyscreases uh, and uh, uh, coagulation uh, uh, problems that sometimes may lead to uh, venous occlusion at early age. We start talking about the clinical features of uh, retinal vein occlusion, starting with the branch retinal vein occlusion. The main clinical features that the patients present with uh, usually sudden loss of visual acuity, Uh, and or related visual field loss. So branch retinal vein occlusion usually affect one of the major retinal vein branches. We know that we have four major retinal vein branches. Uh, superior temporal branch, superior nasal branch, inferior temporal branch, and inferior nasal branch. So when one of those branches is affected, that will give the patient a corresponding visual field loss. If the macula uh, secondarily became ischemic or there was uh, macular edema, the patient also will complain of sudden uh, or, or uh, loss of central visual acuity. Uh, the size that we should look at when we examine patients uh, with branch retinal vein occlusion are hemorrhages, dilatation, and tortuosity of the affected vein uh, in that area. And here are some examples. There are some examples of a vein that is uh, definitely uh, tortuous and dilated compared to, to this vein. This is the superior temporal branch and this is the inferior temporal branch. This is the, the macula, okay, and this is the central part of the macula. So when you, we look at this vein, we can re re realize that this is a dilated and tortuous vein, and we can see uh, corresponding to this vein hemorrhages, flame-shaped hemorrhages, and some uh, blot hemorrhages. And probably also there is some, some element of macular edema in this uh, picture. Uh, this uh, shows us a specific type of uh, venous occlusion which is affecting the macula and this is called macular branch vein occlusion. Uh, 
Here another example of more extensive hemorrhages affecting the inferior temporal uh, branch. We can see clearly that the vein here is dilated and tortuous, and there are a lot of uh, flame shaped hemorrhages and blood hemorrhages. So, what are the complications of the branch retinal vein occlusion? There are two major complications the chronic macular edema and the retinal neovascularization. Retinal, chronic macular edema result from the, the, uh, the mechanism of vein occlusion which includes uh, increasing in the hydrostatic pressure at the affected area and that, also, the, that will lead to a, a leakage of the intravascular components uh, and uh, causing edema. Also, secondary to the uh, stasis that occurs because of the occlusion, there will be uh, some element of uh, acidosis and that will lead to damage to the endothelial cells and the capillaries that will lead to two major pathological changes first inflammation because of the tissue injury and that will attract uh, neutrophils and uh, will activate the uh, immune mediator cells to release their uh, inflammatory mediator uh, that will uh, aggravate the vasodilatation and lead to leakage also the damage of the capillaries will lead to ischemia uh, ischemia by, by itself uh, is uh, a, a stimulating uh, uh, event to uh, start secreting the uh, vascular endothelial growth factor and other growth factors as a response to ischemia. Vascular endothelial growth factor has two main functions. First, it is a permeability factor, so it will increase also the permeability of the uh, capillaries and lead to macular edema, and also it will promote angiogenesis and lead to retinal neovascularization. Uh, when we get, uh, when retinal neovascularization occurs, we should expect two complications secondary to those uh, neovascularization. The first one is vitreous uh, hemorrhage, and the second one is the tractional retinal detachment, as we talked before when we talked about uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And we'll talk about the treatment at the end of the lecture. What about uh, uh, this? This image shows what we were talking about right now. This is a picture of a superior temporal branch vein occlusion. There is also some element of occlusion in the superior nasal. Probably this might be an example of hemiretinal vein occlusion. And uh, we can see here some exudation, hard exudates, uh, that signifies the occurrence of macular edema. In this picture, there is a pre-retinal hemorrhage, uh, or pre-retinal hemorrhage, also one of the complications of retinal neovascularization. We can see here a fibrovascular band and minimal tractional detachment here. Uh, uh, the same here, we can see uh, some element of uh, fibrovascular formation and tractional retinal detachment as a complication of retinal neovascularization. This is an example of how to evaluate patients with the chronic macular edema by uh, the technique we talked uh, about before, which is the OCT. And we can see here by the, the OCT uh, uh, in increasing the thickness of the retina and the formation of those uh, cysts within the, uh, the retina. And this is why we call it cystoid macular uh, edema. This is a fluorescein geography uh, picture, shows uh, some element of hyperfluorescence adjacent uh, close to the center of the fovea, uh, secondary to uh, inferior temporal branch retinal vein occlusion. What about the central retinal vein occlusion? Uh, it, it is it's very similar to the branch and the main pathological changes, but the central retinal vein occlusion involves all the four branches, not only one branch. So when we see all the, those changes uh, uh, involving all the four branches, uh, we start thinking about central retinal vein occlusion. Uh, we divide central retinal vein occlusion into ischemic type and non-ischemic type, depending on the uh, area of retinal perfusion. Luckily, the non-ischemic is the uh, comprised the majority of the cases, about 75% uh, of the cases, 
it present with sudden painless loss of visual uh, acuity and the signs as you know by now that the tortuosity of all veins mild to moderate retinal hemorrhages mild to moderate optic disc swelling this is an example of non ischemic central retinal vein evolution you can appreciate the tortuosity and the dilatation in all the four major branches uh, with the presence of hemorrhages the flame shaped hemorrhages in all the four quadrants and this is uh, this makes the diagnosis of central retinal vein occlusion is this a picture enough to say that this is ischemic or non ischemic usually not but if the changes are mild compared to the uh, more severe form of the ischemic then we will start thinking of that this is non ischemic retinal vein occlusion how can we make sure there are certain uh, clinical features that they suggest that we are dealing with uh, non ischemic if the patient presented with mild to moderate uh, sorry with moderate to severe visual acuity if there is no relative efferent pillary defect if the changes are uh, mild to moderate uh, uh, in the retina then we will we, sh we uh, start thinking that we are dealing with non ischemic central retina vein occlusion but the to to make sure that this is ischemic or non ischemic we should do fluorescein angiography in this fluorescein angiography this is the colored fundus picture shows uh, hemorrhages dot and the blot uh, hemorrhages in all the four quadrants this is the fluorescein angiography uh, this is the arterial phase and these are late phases uh, if you look generally ignoring all the dark spots here that correspond to the hemorrhages you will uh, you will find that the retina is well perfused we will consider this area as an example of good retinal perfusion you remove all the hemorrhages all the dark lesions that correspond to the hemorrhages in this picture uh, you will uh, end up with a well perfused retina and you will understand that better when uh, now you see the uh, picture of the non perfusion and the picture of the ischemic retinal vein occlusion but this this is an example of a pristine angiography for a non ischemic central retinal vein occlusion, there is good retinal perfusion. Those black spots are only the hemorrhages that uh, occur secondary to the occlusion. We call this blocked fluorescence. This is not non perfusion, this is blocked fluorescence. If you uh, remove all those hemorrhages, you will end up removing all those dark spots and the retina uh, will be uh, well perfused. Here in the center of the retina, we have hyperfluorescence, exaggerated fluorescence, hyperfluorescence, secondary to the formation of cystoid macular edema. Uh, what is the prognosis of the non ischemic? Generally good, but there is a certain percentage of patients that will convert into ischemic type. For example, 15% of those patients will convert within four months into ischemic type. One third uh, of those patients will convert to ischemic type within three years. So sometimes we regard the non-ischemic type as an ischemic retinal vein occlusion in progress. It is something that is still continuing. Uh, visual acuity returns uh, uh, to normal in about 50% of patients. And the final visual acuity uh, depends on the initial visual acuity. Uh, but what about the ischemic? The ischemic is less common and it presents with, with more profound sudden loss of visual acuity. Clinically, it presents with similar changes but more profound, more exaggerated, with the presence of the afferent pupillary defect. This is a classic example of central retinal vein occlusion ischemic type. We can see here, barely you can appreciate the optic disc. This is a severely swollen optic disc with extensive hemorrhages all over, involving all the four quadrants, masking all the retinal details. Uh, when uh, we, need, uh, we need to verify this, this is ischemic or non-ischemic, uh, definitely we cannot do fluorescein angiography at this stage. Usually we wait for a few weeks until the hemorrhages uh, become uh, less extensive. And then we can do fluorescein angiography. When you do fluorescein angiography for the ischemic central retinal vein occlusion, you will find a picture like this. This is definitely different than the picture we saw just uh, a moment before about the non ischemic CRVO. This is uh, more extensive areas of non perfusion. This, these areas are non perfused area. If you look at the colored fungus picture, 
and the fluorescence in geography, then the areas, uh, these areas here, they do not have uh, corresponding hemorrhages to confuse the picture. So these areas are definitely areas where with non-perfusion, not hemorrhages. So this is an example of fluorescence in geography uh, in patients with ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. Uh, what are the complications of uh, ischemic central retinal vein occlusion? Uh, unfortunately, visual acuity is permanently impaired in most of the patients, and uh, they develop cystoid macular edema, both types, the ischemic or non-ischemic, they both will develop cystoid macular edema. In the ischemic type, uh, new vascularization will occur, specifically the anterior segment new vascularization in the form of uh, uh, rubiosis iridis and new vascularization at the angle. Uh, and it has been uh, found that uh, the patients with ischemic type, uh, they may get uh, new vascular glaucoma about three to four months after the onset of the occlusion. And this, this is why it was called the 100-day uh, glaucoma. Uh, but uh, also they also develop retinal neovascularization, not only the anterior segment, but the anterior segment is usually more prominent. How do we treat the uh, venous occlusion in general? This is a picture, of, this is a gonioscopic picture showing the retinal neovascular, the angle neovascularization. Um, so what is the management of, uh, of uh, retinal vein occlusion in general? For the occlusion itself, there is no specific uh, treatment. But uh, for the uh, complications, we need to treat the complications. Uh, first, we need to treat the macular edema using either intravitreal anti-VGF agents or intravitreal uh, steroids. Uh, in certain cases, we, we may augment the treatment with uh, laser uh, treatment. And in resistant cases, we will do uh, vitrectomy. For the new vascularization, uh, the treatment of choice is either uh, anti-photocoagulation or, or panretinal, uh, anti-VGF or panretinal photocoagulation. But if for certain reason vitreous hemorrhage or traction retinal detachment uh, occurs, then we uh, need to go for uh, vitrectomy. Uh, in case of new vascular glaucoma, in addition to the treatment of the new vascularization with laser or anti-VGF, we need to uh, do specific anti-glaucoma treatment. Uh, so that's it uh, for now for the vein uh, occlusion. Uh, and thank you very much.